from Macra, New Zealand. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, the controversial world of nutrition. Can eating more be the secret to cycling performance? We also have some political Strava art, the million mile cyclist, and aerodynamic pedaling. Yes, yes, you heard right, aerodynamic pedaling. I think this is the point, Dan, at which I tune out of aerodynamics. <laughs> He's so upset, he knows he can't be aerodynamic pedaling with those ankles. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that recumbent bikes are not only faster than standard upright bikes, they are also no barrier to getting rad. This is Kurt Verrees doing a bar spin. Yeah, now I don't want to state the obvious, Dan, but that's not easy even for a man of Kurt's talents, as you can see. Mm, well worth looking at the full video, and you can find a link to that in the description below. Yeah, now we also learned this week, Dan, that it is possible to do 1,000 kilometers in a single bike ride, almost. Yeah, this uh, is Ed Veal at a Splunk event. What event? Splunk event. Mm. They're a uh, software company, okay. of course. Uh, anyway, Ed rode a quite astonishing 952 kilometers on Zwift, uh, and he averaged 220 watts, which by my calculations put him at burning over 20,000 calories. Yeah. Very impressive and a new world record, but by my calculation side, that left him short of doing a 1,000 kilometer ride in one go. Well, yes. Although he did have to stop at 24 hours. Speaking of which, if you'd like to find out how far Mark, uh, Beaumont and Hank managed to ride in that exact amount of time last weekend, you'll have to wait for the video, which comes out this coming weekend. But let's just say the conditions out on the road were slightly more variable in terms of weather than you'd get in your average uh, pain cave. Finally, this week, we also saw a really interesting article on cycling news with Jakob Fulsang, where he attributes his success in 2019 to eating more carbs. Essentially, if you want to race hard and train hard, you are going to need carbohydrates in order to do that. Say what you like about keto diets, but if you want to perform at high intensities, carbohydrates are essential. They are. And also, protection for us might yes. be a central side, because point, we, mate. as well as anybody else out there, know just how controversial a topic nutrition can be. It's a bit of a minefield, isn't it? I'll get my helmet before the show actually comes out. But very interesting to see that one of the world's best professional athletes and cyclists has realised at the age of 34 that he's been making a seemingly quite basic mistake. Well. Is it as simple as that though? Well, not really, because of course pro cyclists have more fixation on weight than your average person in the street. For good reason, because when you're in the mountains, every gram counts, doesn't it? And so unless you are blessed with a naturally very lean physique, you are going to have to watch what you eat. Well, yeah. Add in the fact that there is evidence out there that shows that by manipulating your nutrition, you can get added training effects. Potentially very risky, but We've seen that pro cyclists, some of them anyway, are more than willing to risk their own bodies in search of performance. Mm. What about non-pro cyclists, the rest of us? Well, unless you're riding up alpine climbs day after day, week after week. With a paycheck at the top. Exactly. Uh, you probably are better with a bit more fuel in reserve, even if it means a few extra grams in terms of some fat or some muscle. Yeah. Well, not just the rest of us, but pros too. Classics rider performing in bad weather, bit of extra robustness, doesn't go amiss. Very true. Uh, it is interesting to see though that the weight issue seemingly becoming even more important as years go by for the top end pros uh, as this piece of research on top end sports shows. Yeah, that's right. So Robert Wood has gone back into the archives and researched the height and weight data of Tour de France cyclists over the past 70 years. And he's pulled out some absolute gems in there. Firstly, the average weight of a Tour de France winner over the last 70 years. Has it, well actually no, hang on, it's still a quiz. Has it gone down, stayed the same, or increased? You're asking me? You already told me the answer and I've read it. Okay, asking you at home, has the average weight of a Tour de France winner gone down, stayed the stayed same? Stayed the same, it was 69 kilograms, wasn't it? Thanks Dan, yeah, no, it's <clears throat> stayed the same. It has. And let it be said also, though, that there are some anomalies and extremes in that data, aren't there? So, for example, Luis Ocaña, climber, was only 52 kilograms, whereas Miguel Indurain, well, he got his nickname Big Mig for good reason, because he was 80 kilograms. Yeah. What's interesting, though, 
really interesting is the fact that while the average weight of a winner has stayed the same, the average weight of a rider in the peloton has come down significantly and quite quickly from 73 kilos just 30 years ago to 69 kilos mm. at the moment. And when you delve back into looking at the Tour winners and some of their data, uh, it shows that whilst the weight on average of a Tour winner has remained the same, the average height has gone up by a whopping eight centimetres, which leads to the conclusion that Tour winners must be getting either leaner or less muscled or both. Yeah, so when you look, both the data set for Tour winners and the rest of the peloton actually looks to be pointing to the same conclusion, which is that pro cycling is basically getting more competitive, more pros are having to push themselves to the absolute limit of human performance and are walking on that tightrope. Mm. A tightrope is a precarious place to be, isn't it? And if you push it too far whilst you're on there, you risk your form falling off a cliff. Or, or a tightrope, if we stick to just the one analogy. I guess that's very true, Si. And in fact, there was another very good example of this very thing last week on a website called bicycling.com uh, with the current US national road champion, Ruth Winder. She, in 2018, got a bit too fixated on her diet and dieting, shave off those final few grams. And she too, like Fulsang, found that it was to the detriment of her performance in racing. That's right, but yeah, this year, when she increased her calorific intake, and unlike Fulsang, she actually focused just on what she was eating rather than on how much or how little, she regained the form that she had had and went on to win the US Nationals solo. Yeah. Holding on for a fantastic victory. Yeah, solo attack with over 30 kilometers to go. And there are countless more examples of people who face the same issues. Yanni Brakovic, for example, or even Ben King, a former US national champion himself, uh, who in fact contributed to a video we did on this very subject just under a year ago. Yeah, that's right. If you haven't seen it already, uh, it's definitely well worth a watch. Now, we would be really interested to read your comments on this subject. Do you think about your nutrition when you're cycling, particularly calorific in take. Please, we know it's a controversial subject, but let's keep it all nice and civil. It is now time for your weekly GCN inspiration. Uh, your chance to win one of three prizes, which can change from week to week. There's a slight variation this week, in fact. Uh, just a reminder, you can still use the uploader, a link to which is in the description below, but you can also just use the GCN app and directly upload it there. That's right, before we get on to today's podium, can we just have a quick update? Last week's winner uh, was from Wiener World, uh, but actually uh, I've been corrected, unsurprisingly, uh, by Christian tell in the comments he said uh, Wienerwald actually means Vienna Forest uh, not Wiener World after all uh, and then we've actually got some sausage trivia now as well from Torsten who said uh, the same sausage in Vienna is called a Frankfurter while it's called a Wiener in Frankfurt amazing yeah isn't that great did the you, things you learn did you think it meant sausage world Wienerwald. Yes, yeah. of course. And it's called Vienna Forest, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, we did get it spectacularly <laughs> let's, wrong. All let's right, move on to the prize, shall we? In third place and getting themselves a GCN Keep Cup is uh, Dorin B, who was out for a ride uh, with his Cervelo R5 mm. and then got home before the rain. Whoa! Now, I couldn't decide whether to put this in as it's not particularly inspirational in terms of making you want to get out on your bike, but that is a spectacular photo. I tell you what, mate, it might not make you want to go out on my bike, but it would <laughs> make you ride home? blooming fast. <laughs> yeah. I think I'd be putting in a new TV. He's just sat there taking photos. Uh, but he's now got himself a keep cup, so well done. That looks incredible, doesn't it? Right, uh, in second place, winning GCN club membership for three months and therefore getting some swanky GCN socks each and every month through the post. Uh, is Rose, oh no, I was That's about to say bike. Rose Back Road. Yeah, no, that is the bike. Uh, Mugger 99. Uh, I've taken this picture on the descent from Monte Bondone in Trentino. Check it out, autumn colors to the max. Yeah. I actually, uh, I'm not sure I was allowed to do this, but I nixed this post from GCN Tech's, uh, uh, what, what's that segment called where they rate their bikes? <laughs> and I did the show once, I've forgotten already. Bike Vault. That's the one, I nicked it from the Bike Vault site. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do that, but anyway, well done, Mugger. Uh, you are getting that free subscription. Yeah, to I'm not sure I'm comfortable club. with that, mate. Crikey. That's controversial. Is it? All right, we'll, we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, right? let's move uh, Finally, on. shall we get on to the winner who yes. this week will receive not only the GSIN hoodie there and also the GSIN t shirt from last week, but also the brand new GSIN book, The Plant Based Cyclist, uh, which we now have in physical form. Yes. 
This is an absolute perler. In fact, I've wait. been so excited about the fact we've got a physical form of book that I haven't actually shown who the winner is. Yeah, good point. Uh, the winner of that prize is Daniel. Not me, uh, but this is from Crater Lake National Park. Ride the Rim 2019 on a perfect windless day in September with some friends. Windless? Wow. It's that, like a mirror. That looks amazing, doesn't it? Fantastic. Anyway, back to the prizes. Yeah, a worthy, well, a worthy, worthy winner there. Um, but yes, our new plant-based book, uh, which uh, I can't wait for people to start getting these. Actually, all the pre-orders. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. It is a nice book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, there you go. Then there is your podium for this week, plus a bit of sausage trivia as well. As Dan said at the beginning, if you want to enter GCN Inspiration for next week, either use the app or the uploader. Yeah. Unfortunately, sir, I've got a few more likes on my inspirational post on the app. I'm Sorry. now up to 1,408. That's now sounding like quite a target to do uh, in just Advent, but uh, you're more than up to the job. Well, I, mean. I think I might keep it to 1,000. Well, I'll do no. the other 408 and however many I get to in January. No, no, I don't think you will. That's not how it's going to work, Dan. We're going to do a quick bit of self-promotion now, Si, aren't we? We are indeed. It's not going to be comfortable for us because it doesn't come naturally, but let's go for it anyway. <laughs> I can't wait for this bit. Uh, we've got a big sale just started over on the GSEN shop. So head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork and you will find many products on sale at up to 50% off, including on-the-bike clothing, casual clothing and accessories too. That's right. And also keep your eyes peeled because on Friday we've got something hot dropping in the shop as well. So uh, it'll be on our social media channel. We've seen it. it looks good, well. actually, doesn't it? Well, shh, they don't know that. Oh, Dan, you're going to spoil the surprise. Well, I'm not um, yeah, that's right. Anyway, uh, the other thing to mention as well, um, if you are planning your cycling holiday for 2020, then just bear in mind that GCM Mallorca is very nearly sold out now uh, already. So that's from the 26th to the 30th of March. Uh, four days of riding and, well, just general Fun, in it, basically. With us, yeah. Which is why yeah. I'm quite surprised that we haven't got many tickets left. So. I know, yeah. Amazing. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we will start with the news that not only is it possible to ride 1,000 kilometres in one go, Dan... Mm. Actually, it, I'm up to 1,408 last time I looked at it, which is frightening, I would say. That is a tall order for one go, isn't it? But uh, anyway, it's actually possible to ride one million miles in less than a lifetime because that's exactly what Russ Mantle, an 82-year-old cyclist from here in the UK, has done inside the last week, having been logging all his rides and his miles for 68 years. Yeah. Congratulations, oh, Russ. I mean, word, that yeah. really is seriously impressive. Even when you start to break it down, in your head, you think, well, a million miles over 68 years, probably doable. But even when you break it down, it's an average of almost 12,000 miles every single year. Funnily enough, I did not think a million miles in a lifetime sounds doable. <laughs> no, it's just like, I don't know why. That's maths, astonishing. My maths isn't very good, but when I use the calculator, blimey. Uh, anyway, it just goes to show you that even if it's not on Strava, doesn't mean it didn't happen. That's right. But speaking of Strava, here is something that definitely did happen. This is the ultimate Strava art, the owner of which, Gary Cordery, has a bit of a history in creating Strava art. So Strava themselves actually commissioned him to go out and make this to commemorate the fall of the Berlin Wall 30 years ago. It took him three days to do this, which is basically a recreation of the famous graffiti that Dmitri Rubel uh, put on the side of the Berlin Wall in 1990, which is named Brudekus, which depicts an embrace between the Soviet and East German leaders of the time. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Uh, right, now sticking with art, but something slightly less politically charged now, did you see that Peter Stettiner has announced that he is stepping away from the world tour and going to gravel racing. Hmm. Well, I did read that, but I don't know what it's got to do with art. Well, it was a quote within his statement, which I'm going to read to you. Uh, I love the vibe of these races, the solo battles within and with others, but the communal celebration afterwards, knowing we all conquered an odyssey individually and together. Wow. Well, I'll take your point, Si, that is quite the arty quote, isn't it? Isn't it just? Yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm sure gravel racing is an absolute breath of fresh air compared to racing at world tour level. I'm also sure that Stetson is not going to be the only one to move across. No. I think there's going to be an influx at some point soon. To see how many more take that same step. Just like mountain biking in the early 90s, Dan. 
Yeah, yeah. people are going to get sick of it, the pros coming over. It's going to be the first European pro that ruins it for everyone else. That's right. Who's going to be the first European pro to go to America, race gravel, and then everyone's going to blame them? Answers below. Uh, moving on, Gazzetta della Sport in Italy last week reported that Mario Cipollini has had to undergo heart surgery. Uh, he was out training and knew that there was something amiss, and a subsequent biopsy realised that he'd had a viral infection that had caused something called myocarditis, which is basically inflammation of the heart muscle. Yeah, he underwent surgery last month, uh, where they also uh, tried to correct an arrhythmia as well. So pretty major surgery, you'd yeah. think, five hours or something? Yeah, and it's going to be some weeks, apparently, before he can going to find out whether or not he's actually going to make a full recovery. Uh, something that was slightly amusing, I thought, about this story was the fact that he knew that something was amiss out training, because when he climbed at 500 watts, he felt limited. Yeah, I think a lot of us are going to hear that statement down and think that we should probably get checkups as well. I certainly feel limited at 500 watts mm. if I get there these days. Also undergoing surgery recently was the Jumbo Visma rider George Bennett. Initially, reports suggested that he'd had some ribs removed, uh, but subsequently it was revealed it was just some cartilage. Uh, but I did see on Twitter that George Bennett put something out which said, in answer to the questions you're all going to ask me, A, about 100 grams, which right. is what people are asking about how much weight was taken out, and B, no I can't. Can't what? I don't know, it's quite confusing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on to some science and an aerodynamic study which they are saying is the first of its kind. That's right, because this does not focus on frames, or wheels, or helmets, or clothing, or even body position, but aero pedalling. Hmm. Not something I'd have thought about, I don't think, or no. any other people, which is perhaps why this is the first study of its kind. Well, maybe. Uh, it's the latest one in a long collaboration between Monash University in Melbourne, Cycling Australia, and the Australian Institute of Sports. And they are claiming that there are significant gains to be made through changing your pedalling position. Yeah. Potentially significant gains to be made from aerodynamics, but you'd think those gains could quite easily be lost from having to learn to pedal in a completely and utterly different way. Ah, well, they did talk about what you've just said, and Dr. Timothy Crouch, who's one of the researchers, uh, said that the same was thought about some extreme sprinting positions, and I presume he's talking about Caleb Ewan's, but that actually, with the correct training and enough practice, there are still significant advantages to be had. Well, I await to see what an aero pedaling technique looks like, but as I said at the top of the show, I think I might be out uh, of that, just like I am with extreme sprinting positions. Um, there's obviously comes to a point where if you've only got 900 watts to sprint with there's no point Getting what position yeah, exactly yeah and it's same is probably true with pedaling technique now mm. although that said you would probably be advised to adopt it with your 1400 yeah. kilometer bike ride well i'm all over it actually i've installed 100 millimeter millimeter cranks really so is that I'm, a thing my legs are moving less I presume that we're going to be more aero you heard that here first as well actually you didn't did you because you copied that off triathletes yeah you have yeah um too fair though you're blessed with aerodynamic calves, aren't you? So that that's is uh, true, yeah. Yeah, and an aerodynamic nose. Okay, mate. And arms, the pretty aero too. <laughs> Next up, it's hack forward slash bodge of the week. Don't forget you can use the hashtag GCN hack, but you can also use the GCN app or the upload or link to which is in the description down below. First up this week is somebody who's used the name Mr over on the app. No further information. Well, everyone, that's gone now. No one else can be called Mr. So uh, yeah. you got there well, first. Well, that's a good thing about getting in first on the app. You can get your own name. On all other social media, I'm Daniel Lloyd One, but I'm now just Dan Lloyd on this wow. one. Anyway, uh, he says, I don't have a spare XDS, so I use this old dining room chair instead, referring to the fact that I put my towel on an XDS when I was doing indoor training. The uh, Daniel Lloyd. I fitted two boxes cages for easy access. It can hold three towels, so it should be enough to keep side dry, possibly. No, no, not enough. Uh, also got places for his remotes and his gels and everything. That's pretty good going. I mean, yeah, like I, I do see that. I, I probably need some kind of um, clock, pimped out chair as well. Really, next to my yeah, it looks good. Hack. Yeah, I mean, some people might have used a table or, or some shelves, but no, modifying a chair. Um, and then presumably you can sit on it after you finish too, couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, or do what this next person's done, uh, which is Seth Frankel, um, who says no matter how many bar and seat positions one moves through, a really long session indoors can do a number on the old undercarriage. Yes, it can. 
So a minute or two easing the load without fully standing can do wonders to help keep the pain away. Look at that. <laughs> He's doing like little mini pull-ups whilst on his uh, on his turbo trailer. I tell you what, given the, the reference to me sweating, I couldn't do indoor training whilst wearing a grey no. cotton hoodie. Well, he might have just done that for the photo. Maybe, but that might, might yeah, like, like Rocky. You do go like. more numb on an indoor trainer than you do when you're out on the road, don't you? You do. You massively do, yeah. Anyway, so, well, it's a hack then, if that works for you. Uh, right, moving on. This came in from Jerry over in Michigan in the USA. Uh, five and a half thousand cyclists shop annually to challenge nature. Uh, in this case, I did a challenge a mechanic. At uh, mile 15 of 30, it came down hard on the nose of my seat and the carbon fibre rails failed. All I had was my pouch. Well, you're kind of lucky that you still had your pouch. <laughs> I used a tube and the bike pouch as shown and made the best of it. <laughs> it still looks rather painful. Yeah. He does say uh, that he did opt to stand as much as possible for the rest of the ride. Yeah, no, I, um, well, fair play for finishing, basically. I think, uh, I think. I don't think I'd sit on that, mate. Well, it looks like a very alternative form of contraception still, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, let's move on. All right, we'll move on to this Bunch. one. Uh, from uh, Jezua Logi. Uh, homemade stainless steel studs for my mountain bike shoes uh, for cyclocross. I don't know, mate. I'm not sure why you'd want to hand make your own studs. They're pretty cheap right. from a football you, shop, aren't you they? You're saying bodge, then? Well, yeah, okay. just get some football studs, surely. Right, moving on to laser beam. This appears to be effective. This bike has been in the same spot for the past three days. <laughs> well, that's borderline genius. As long well, as... I can't figure out what the little sort of padlocky bit is where you have to put the number in to remove it. I mean, how does that attach to the chain that he's presumably had to break and then uh, reattach together? Yeah, that is a good point, actually. When you think about it, that's quite a mind-bending um, logic mm -hmm. puzzle. Probably a bodge then, isn't it, really? Because oh, all yeah. you need is a chain tool. Yeah, and then you'd be able to whip that bike away into the sunset, if you wished. Well, like a balance bike. Must be you could refit the chain afterwards, can you? Well, it's been that long you want to hang around at the crime scene, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> right. Put the chain in your pocket and leg it. Uh, next up, then. Sheridan Halls. Uh, no need to buy an expensive table that takes up more space in your garage. Is this another indoor training hack? So the reason we're looking like that is because I've put the picture in the wrong way. Should I just do that for Oh, you? yeah, there we go. Uh, well, I'm not... Well, I mean, that does look quite good, doesn't it? But again, why not just put up a shelf? I, I, you know, or an expensive table. Just get a table from a second-hand shop. Are you saying budge, are you? I am, really. I mean, it's, you know, it's quite dramatic, but... You're just jealous he's got more fans than you have, so... <laughs> uh, right, moving on to... He's, I said budge. Uh, Stevie yeah. Santini, homemade bike rack, designed and manufactured by myself. Uh, no bikes touch each other, which is the main design brief. Super lightweight, super strong, and easy storage. Another wow. one that I put on its side. What's going on this week? If that's homemade, that's brilliant. Isn't fair it? play, yeah, that is. I mean, I wouldn't even if I was really, really good at making stuff. I think I'd think twice about having a rack for four bikes that goes on my car because yeah. if that goes wrong, and as things stand, you definitely wouldn't think about making a bike rack. Well, no, absolutely. <laughs> but as in, you know, that's a high well, risk strategy. That's a, that's a definite hack. That one. It is, yeah. Well, hang on a minute. How long has, have you had it for, and have you actually driven with it yet? Yeah, because... I seem to remember seeing that at the side of the motorway on its own the other day. <laughs> right, this one came in from Mark Wilson, spotted this at our local cyclist race. It's the VeloBounce.cc bike wash, with a wheelie bin water reservoir attached via hose to a petrol washer and a handy bike rack attachment. Surely a hack? That is an absolute hack, as any cyclocross pit crew member that's lugged the precious commodity that is water across a bumpy field will know. What? Genius. The only thing I suppose is how you get the wheelie bin to the race. Do you do you fill it up at home and then transport it, or do you just stick the wheelie bin in? Well, you the could car? you could sort of attach it to the back of that homemade bike rack and just have it wheeled along behind the car. I don't know. Answers down below. Uh, don't forget to continue submitting your hacks and bodges. Uh, go over and use the GCN app. Caption competition time, which is your weekly chance to win a GCN Elite water bottle, as Sai is showing now. Yes. Uh, all you need to do is put your witty captions in the comments section below uh, after we show you this week's photo. Last week's one, though, was this of Elizabeth at the end of a rather muddy cross race. And this week's winner is Stefan Hofmeister, who put caption, Hey Ellie, there is a bit of mud in your face. Yes! 
Genius. A lot of likes on that comment as well. Uh, and someone immediately underneath claiming that uh, Stefan was the winner. So make sure you get in touch and we will send you out your Elite water bottle, which uh, I think we said last week. Brilliant, isn't it? Because this is so light that uh, we're going to save loads of money on postage. On post yeah. about it. Uh, right, this is the photo for you to get stuck into this week. Once again, it's our favourite cyclocross rider. Well, one of our favourite cyclocross riders. Can I, uh, can I do this one? Yeah. Okay. Ellie is a bit tired. Oh, mate, that is genius. I know. Yes, check me out. Finally, I've no got a good caption. No wonder you look so pleased with yourself. That yes. is probably the best one we have ever had. Oh, yeah, I think so. I Nobody's yeah. going to beat that this week, but if you think you might be able to, we can try. You won't. Yeah. Leave it in the comment section down below. Unbelievable, yeah. mate. Yeah, thanks, Ellie mate. is a Cheers. bit tired. I know. <laughs> It's Ask GCN Training now, that part of the show where we tackle one of your training conundrums. And as an added bonus, the person whose training conundrum we answer also then gets three months free subscription to Zwift. Happy days. Hmm. All you need to do is use the hashtag Ask GCN Training and leave your question in the comments section below, which is what Fraser Goodwin, a long time GCN fan, yeah. in fact, did underneath last week's show. Uh, here's his question. Uh, he's inspired by the amazing bike packing content that you've put out, presumably meaning you, Si. Well, and, and James <laughs> now as well, yeah, fellow bike packer. Uh, next time I'm planning a different challenge, going from Brussels uh, to his Swedish in-laws, which is basically a route of almost 1,500 kilometers, which is around 150 k's every day. Uh, what should he concentrate on for his winter training? Increasing his power so he can ride faster in lower power zones, uh, simple endurance, or both? Well, it's a good question actually, isn't it? How do you go from a sportif rider to a bike packer? I suppose the nice simple answer is that actually with bike packing, it kind of doesn't really matter that much. That sounds like a really great distance per day and then overall. Um, remember you can take your time about it. Um, Specifically though, if you're gonna be training, train to just get fit so that, like you say, you can go faster in your lower power zones. But um, but yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about backing it up every day because no. you just do do what you feel. Fraser does Great. say at the end, I guess Dan will be best place to advise me given his forthcoming advent adventures, which I presume is sarcastic uh, because I haven't done bike packing before. So I haven't but you could year. actually, funnily enough, another 80 likes, mate, and you could actually go from <laughs> yeah. Fraser's house in Brussels to his in-laws in Sweden. And what? Surprise them for Christmas. <laughs> They'll love that, won't they? Uh, what I was going to say though, that one bit of advice I can give is that just being fitter like sizes and increasing your FTP will probably help you, even if you're only doing short rides, because if you've got an FTP of 400 watts, you're gonna find it far easier to do eight hours at 150 than if your FTP is 150 watts, in which case you'd only be able to do it for an hour. Before we get on to what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days, let's have our favourite look back at some of the best comments that you've been leading, uh, leading, leaving under the previous seven days of videos. Easy for you to say. Thanks. Now the first you come underneath last week's show. Uh, first up, Nick W. My wife's cutting comment this week whilst watching, you lot commit crimes against the fashion police every time you go out. It's the withering tone she says it with that gets me. Well, to be fair, Nick, uh, it's the fact that you said my wife's cutting comment this week while listening, suggesting that she makes one every well, week. Well, seems to this is quite a regular instalment in the comment section. I think I might have read about Nick's cutting, uh, wife's cutting comment before. <laughs> Nick, just make sure he keeps updated each and every week. Um, and hello to, to Nick's wife as well. Uh, right, Gumster says, uh, whilst uh, talking about the cycling laws, by the way, uh, here in Denmark, we had a comedian who ran for our parliament promising a tailwind on all cycling paths if he was elected, and he did get elected. Wow, that's amazing. The, the you know, it's public, we voters are a little bit gullible sometimes, aren't well, we? I was going to say, it's unlike uh, a politician to promise something that they can't actually deliver, isn't it, on the run-up to some kind of election? But anyway, mm, Let's steer on. well clear of this <laughs> subject, Dan. Uh, where's that helmet? Uh, Carl Peterson. Hey, Dan, come join me at the end of the month as I tackle the toughest race on Earth, the Munger mountain bike race, 1,040 kilometres. So perfect. Well, it's not, not now, perfect. is it, Carl? It's not hard enough anymore, mate. Well, no, I also want to do the easiest kilometres possible. In fact, I have started to look at the flat local roads that I've got. You want to get in touch with that, um, politician. that Danish politician, Maybe. yeah, and have a, a tailwind. Uh, right, underneath um, Hank and Jenny's bikepacking video, which was utterly brilliant, if you haven't watched it already, please do. Um, Arthur J, uh, one of many commenters, um, basically saying how much they like Jenny, which is cool, he said, you can tell by Jenny's laugh that she's got life all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> 
Or that she's met Hank. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true that. Yeah. Underneath there, the hill climb video with Mr. Cannings. Phil Evans put, when you finally make it onto GCN, only for them to show your pain face while being overtaken. Well, hang on a minute then. Does that mean, Phil, that, that this is you? Yes, yes, I guess it does. Anyway, congratulations for getting up, hey, Tor, because that is a that is a monster climb, isn't it? Yes, it is. Right, on the channel this week, beginning on Wednesday, where we show you how to ride faster on flat roads. That is with Hank. Perfect for your 1400 kilometer bike ride, Dan. It is, I've already watched it, actually. It's a good one, and I'm using some of that advice, as well as my 100 millimeter cranks. <laughs> anyway, on Thursday, it's myself and Sire bringing you the top 13 most controversial moments of the 2019 <laughs> road racing season. And then Friday, we have another game of bike between Jeremy Powers and Tom Mearson. Can he win this one? Tune in on Friday to find out. Uh, Saturday, we are delving back into Nigel and our recipe book, which uh, have we got mentioned book? it. Yeah, we got a new book out, actually. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got ride food this week, so plant-based ride food uh, coming out on Saturday. And then on Sunday, this, I think, could well be the most heroic challenge that Mark Beaumont has ever tackled. Uh, certainly the most heroic thing that James has ever done. Uh, how far can you ride in 24 hours in the late autumn. So uh, yeah, find out how they got More on. heroic than riding around the world in under 80 days. Well, yeah, I mean, because that's <laughs> only, he only did 17 hour days, whereas yeah. 24. He, ne he never went the full 24 before, did he? No, I don't think he did. Well, he has done it before, actually. Wow, okay. He rode the North Coast 500 in 36 hours straight. That's but, true. Um, he used to show off. It was, he, actually, I was about to say the weather was better, but no, it wasn't that time. Anyway, he's basically, it was great for James. Really well done. Almost the end of the show, but first up, of course, it is Extreme Corner. Now, there's been an enormous amount of cross racing going on recently, some of it quite epic, so we thought we'd throw you a bit of a compilation. quite as extreme as a bar spin on a slippery, recumbent. Slippery. Yeah, but you know, you can only have that recumbent clip once per show, I, I would think, wouldn't you? Yeah, probably right. Uh, right, that's pretty much the end of this week's show. Don't forget we've got loads more cross racing coming up for you live over on GCN Racing. Uh, this Sunday, in fact, we have the next round of the DVV Trophy, where Matthew van der Poel continues his season. And that is live uh, to most of the world, except for the Belgium and the Netherlands. The Belgium, Belgium and the Netherlands. That's right. Please also make sure you give the show a big thumbs up as well. And if you would like some more content from GCN, you can find that bike packing video with Jenny advising Hank just down here.